Welcome to Tai Chi, the way to radiant health. My name is Jeff Cote, and I am the Occidental Taoist. In this show, we're going to practice some Tai Chi and Qigong and other Taoist internal and meditative practices. These practices enjoy a long history throughout all of China, and I've had the great opportunity to study with some wonderful teachers, and I want to share that with you. In this episode, we're going to cover the bouncing expansion, the counter swing, the bouncing swing, and the column counter swing as a review and to give us more time to practice. We're going to let you practice each individual movement for a little while, bringing your attention to specific elements of each movement so that you can perfect them and have them give you the maximum benefit. So we'll begin with the bouncing expansion. That's the one where our feet are shoulder width apart. Our center line is upright and relaxed. We're relaxing the inguinal fold in the hip so there's a soft buoyancy and a spring-like feeling in our legs. This is the one where we reach out, spherically expanding and coming back in towards the center. We're going to start slowly and at the be beginning, the first thing I want you to pay attention to is this inguinal fold in the hip. We want to make sure that there's a rising and falling in this hip and a feeling of the center line moving straight up and down. Now one of the best ways to accomplish this is to feel the triangle of the foot that we're going to stand in. If you think about the foot, it's got across the ball of the foot to the heel forms a triangle and that's the load bearing portion of the foot. We want to make sure we're going straight down into the center of that and straight up and down through the center line. So before I even begin the expansion, I'm going to begin with just rising and falling like this, letting my center line go straight up and down. So we start and just work with that movement, nice and relaxed, feeling the center line moving up and down and our weight going into the center of the foot. When practicing to enhance my feeling awareness, at times I will close my eyes and I will encourage you to close your eyes and really feel the center line. Turn the eye focus inward as though you can picture and look at the center line moving straight up and down. You can look at the hip, knee, ankle fold that helps you get the weight straight down into the center of the foot. And then we're going to add in the arms. This will give us our coordinated expansion. We start here, expand out, and move back in. We start slow. No bouncing. This is just the coordinated expansion. Just feeling that. We've got to try to remain in that sort of center line straight up and down like a carousel horse feeling as we expand. Then we're going to add it into a bounce where we go out and drop and bounce in the legs. Now you can see that sort of coordinated bounce. The arms cross, the body bounces. I'm putting a little stop motion in here in each action and I want you to do that with me. Just kind of stopping and stopping at the two extreme points here. Finding it here, getting that little bit of bounce. Bounce and back up. But then we're going to just let it be contiguous. Just working with the feeling of coordinated expansion and making that work in conjunction with that straight up and down fold. And then last, we want to start to consider the three elements of all Qigong, what are known as the three regulations. The first regulation is the regulation of the body, which we've been discussing. What is the body doing? How is it doing it? The second one is the regulation of the mind. What is the mind doing and how is it doing it? <coughs> In this particular case, we're trying to get a feeling of the center itself expanding spherically. You want to let your awareness move from the center out to the back. Center move 
from the center out to the sides. So it feels like we expand as a sphere, moving out and back, out and back. And then the last regulation is the regulation of the breath. And what we're going to do is we're going to let our breath be full and natural. We want to breathe to the center. This should help us with our centralized awareness, right? So as we inhale, we should get a feeling of expansion on the inhale and release on the exhale. We want our breath to move in and out through our nose, flow freely down, expand and release in a nice, consistent, thin thread that is relaxed and natural. So it may not coordinate in timing with our movements at first. You're, not, you're certainly not going to inhale and then exhale with each move. You'll hyperventilate. We want to avoid that. What we want to do instead is just breathe fully. Let our breath become full and flourish in the body. Try to imagine making space that as you expand in every direction doing your movements, you feel like you make space inside for the breath to fill. And with every exhale, you empty yourself of all tension, all that unnecessary activity, and all unnecessary mental activity. Again, you can close your eyes, turn those eyes inward to pay attention to the coordination of expansion and release. Notice how surrendering into repetition, letting yourself fall into the repetition of expand and release, lets the mind relax. It lets the body relax. It lets yourself surrender to motion, joining with the activity, with the wholeness of your being. If there's any holding and you feel like you need to let go a little stronger, you can always exhale in an almost sigh, sighing-like action. Just <sighs> if you feel like there's any tension that just won't let go, try that a few times. See how that feels. Oftentimes, if you're holding tension, you can just envelop that sense of tension in your body with your awareness. Just let your awareness completely surround it. And then as you exhale, Try to make room to let it expand. Just let that holding let go outward. This is called outer dissolving. You want to get a feeling as though you're dissolving the tension outward with your exhale. Just like that. By now, you should start feeling like your body is settling into this, settling into your activity. This is one of the reasons why we learn this first as part of the Tai Chi. This is our warm up. It's an important part of the warm up, and it teaches us a lot of different points and important elements of Tai Chi centralization, coordinated action, and the essentials of what Qigong really is, which is the regulation of the body, the regulation of the breath, and the regulation of the mind. Tai Chi falls under the umbrella of Qigong. Consequently, we approach Tai Chi in the same way we approach Qigong. If you'll remember from last episode, we don't want to have a sudden stop. So we try to gather up the momentum and just ground it through our center, just and let go rather than stopping ourselves hard. So that was the bouncing expansion. That's the first of our warm-ups, as you'll remember from our last episode, as we began to introduce all the basic elements and the specific points that we had to pay attention to. Here, I'm trying to give you a chance to really feel each one, an individual. And then we're going to go through them again at the very end, just as we did last time as a long practice sequence. Uh, it'll take a we'll do it a little bit longer this time. And I know this is a lot of the same activity, for a couple of these episodes, but learning the essential elements here can really help you learn the other stuff we're going to learn later. Get a lot of those basic points out of the way now 
in a simple exercise. When things start to get more complicated movements, some of these basic elements have to be already integrated into the way you do things. So the next one is the counterswing, if you remember correctly. This comes right out of the bouncing expansion. If we have this bouncing expansion going on, we have that lift and drop feeling. Now, I'm going to bring your attention to a specific element of this, is that lift and drop of the arms. A lot of times when people start to do this, and I teach classes, people will change the movement. It'll no longer feel like it's the expansion creating the twist. They start to just turn the waist and move the arms out like this. That is a completely different exercise. It's one we're eventually going to do as part of a warm-up sequence, but it is not this exercise. This isn't a trunk twist exercise. This is a counter swing exercise. This relies on the action of the lifting and dropping of the arms that we've got from our bouncing expansion. What will happen is instead of in a trunk twist exercise, if we turn our waist, the waist turns and that's what turns the chest. In the counter swing exercise, the dropping of the arms and the momentum of the arms in motion is what turns the chest and instead we're going to anchor the hips. So we get this bouncing expansion, get that going again, and then we're going to let one hand go in front and one hand go in back. Now you can see that that drop in front and in back creates a twist to the shoulders. I want to make sure that my hips don't turn. If my hips turn, I'm going to transfer that twist into my knees. That's not ideal for the knee. The knee doesn't do well when it twists. We want to keep that in its hinge relationship. So instead of allowing our waist to turn or our hips to turn, we're going to keep the bones of the hips oriented to straight forward and let the torso turn. Now this does two things. Aside from protecting the knees and anchoring the lower body so that the knees stay safe, it also creates a twisting massage to the internal organs as your torso between the rib cage and the waist twists back and forth. So we get that lift and drop from the bouncing expansion and back and forth. We always go back out to the sides. Notice I come out and then drop and out and drop. And again, we can do that stop motion. There's an expansion, so you should get a little press through the legs. The arm should come out. And we're going to do a little stop here just to get the midpoints and get our points of action. So we go out and pause, drop. I'm trying to keep, it looks like my waist is turning because of my jacket, but if you, if you see, my waist, my hips are not turning. Right? Or if they do, they move just a little bit. Lift and drop, lift and drop, lift and drop. Then we add a little bit of contiguous motion. Now, what I want you to direct your attention to, now that you have the basic action happening, I want you to feel the space between the chest and the lower abdomen, what they call the middle dantian and the lower dantian. Feel what's going on in between there, not just in the front, but in the back as well, the whole column of the body. And just like when we were doing the bouncing expansion, trying to get that feeling of release and expand, on the exhales, we've got our motion happening. I want you to just, as you inhale, let your awareness sharpen into the torso, feeling that space between those two operative centers of the chest and the hips. And on the exhale, just imagine it letting go, like any tension that you have is dissolving outward. Just letting go of all holding, maximizing the rotation not by working harder, but by allowing more. Let your body do the action effortlessly. Let it flow from a light, soft action and intention. And don't resist it. A lot of what we're going to learn how to do is to move with zero resistance. No internal resistance to the action we're creating thereby becoming more efficient and effective in our motion. This lets us move in a relaxed, 
coordinated fashion. As you can see, there is a press through the legs, but it's very light. I'm not using as much leg power here as I was in the bouncing expansion because less is necessary. There's more momentum from the arms. Let yourself really go and feel this. Let yourself go inward and feel this action. As you turn inward, maybe even closing your eyes and feeling that twist, just let the words that I say drift through your awareness if something feels important, go ahead and let it in. If something feels like it's a distraction to your focus, let it go. We'll come back to it later. And we're going to shift this movement now into the bouncing swing that we did last week. Now this bouncing swing is very similar to the one we the bouncing expansion, but instead of the arms going to the side, they go to the front. And if you remember correctly, we borrow the motion at the apex of the twist and turn it into a forward and back bounce. Now I'd like you to try that transition a couple times. So if you're already back here, just bring your arms back out to the sides into a bouncing expansion, then turn it into counter swing again. And maybe create that swing from the other side. So if last time you s started to swing the arms forward from this position, then you will swing it forward from the opposite on this side, like so. And we're going to go back and forth with that a few times. So now we go back out to the sides counter swing and forward and back and then back out to the sides counter swing and forward and back Every week, I will try to introduce at least one new movement, even if we're just reviewing and getting more practice of what we've done, I'll try to introduce something new. This week, we're going to introduce the counter column swing or the column counter swing. It can be said either way. What it is, is I'm going to treat my body like a column and I'm going to counter swing forward and back. Now you notice as I was swinging, I brought my weight the momentum of the arms towards my center line and then I used a forward and back extension to create a twist to the torso. Now here, this one is different from the counter swing to the sides. This counter swing to the forward and back or the column counter swing is, is actually generated by the waist. So as the momentum of the arms comes down, I turn my waist and just reach out with the arms forward and back and I get a forward and back column swing using the, the twist of the column of the body. Now there is some movement. Again, I'm not trying to turn my hips so far that my knees become disturbed. I want to use the majority of the power is the waist. The waist should feel like it does a turn. The hips will move a little bit, but as you can see, I'm not moving more than a few inches back and forth with the hip bones. I'm generating the power with the waist and directing that power up the torso into the arm. Now, one of the ways I really like to practice this is to imagine as though I'm in water and I'm going to try to push that water with the power of my waist back and forth. So my hands are pushing the water forward and back like I'm a giant washing machine. Here, we really want to pay attention to the center line and make sure that it stays upright and that we don't shift our weight back and forth. We're not trying to turn and shift like so. 
we're trying to keep our center line directly in the center and let it just twist by the power of the waist and then reach out with the hands. Push the water and reach with the fingertips. The waist generates all the motion here. Relax your shoulders. Remember, coordinate breath, body, and mind. The mind here is focusing on the column of the body and the center line and its twist. The body is focused on the action of coordination and its motion while maintaining upright center. And the breath is again just natural and relaxed, breathing all the way down to the lower abdomen. hands to the center, deep breath and relax, just dropping any excess energy and tension. At this point, you should feel like your body is alive and active, yet relaxed. This moves the lymph, it moves chi and blood, and it begins to activate all the tissues and all the channels of the body to make us ready for Tai Chi practice. It's a reason why I spend a little bit of time on this. So a lot of times when people practice Tai Chi, they'll forego the warming up because they want to get right on to moving with the Tai Chi form. And while I love the Tai Chi form and I love working with Tai Chi, I was trained very intensely to remember that the warm ups and the body conditioning of the basic practices help to set up everything for the Tai Chi, help us to get in the right mind and body space and make sure that our body stays in the, in the condition we need it to be in so that we can practice Tai Chi for a very long time and at the maximum level of our ability, okay? And to always grow our ability. These basic practices, I highly recommend you do not shortcut, but you learn to do at least a little bit of them every time. I just wanna quickly run through each of these for a little bit of time in sequence, just in silence and let you practice and experience what you wanna focus on as we go through them. I will just say the names of the practices. We start with the bouncing expansion. and counter swing. Bouncing swing. And then we close, bring the feet together, deep breath in, 
gathering the chi, gathering yourself, and releasing any unnecessary tension, energy, or thought. Shusha, thank you for joining me on the path to radiant health, long life, and a peaceful, happy heart. Thank you.